Hi, my name is Kato, and a couple of days ago, I posted a video where I play through uh, um, a piece called Sadness and Sorrow. And in this video, I'm kind of focusing on the, the Gabriel flute from musical sampling. Um, I just wanted to, to make kind of a walkthrough video where I go through each of the instruments used in that previous video. I wasn't really thinking about using the... Uh, uh, focusing on the Gabriel flute from musical sampling uh, in the beginning but this uh, beautiful sounding uh, sample library uh, was just perfect for this uh, little project so uh, the Gabriel flute became the kind of the, the focus point in that previous video so in this video I'm just gonna go through each of the instruments used in that uh, video and um, what happened was I was browsing the the sheetmusicdirect.com website for some uh, some sheet music. Uh, I had just purchased uh, the Dorico sheet music software from Steinberg uh, version 4.3. Uh, I had I purchased Dorico uh, when it first came out version one, and I wasn't really impressed with the software, but now a few years have gone by and we have uh, version 4.3 and the software is, is really really good now and I got a good deal on the upgrade from version 1 so I purchased Dorico and I also purchased uh, Note Performer 3 to be used as the playback engine in Dorico and I just wanted to to find some sheet music that wasn't too complex so I could learn the Dorico sheet music software and I was browsing the sheetmusicdirect.com website for yeah, a piece that wasn't too complex and had a good amount of different instruments and I came across this uh, uh, epic gaming themes arranged by Paul Murtha uh, I checked out the, the YouTube video at the bottom a lot of the sheet music here at uh, sheetmusicdirect.com uh, you will see a YouTube video at the bottom of the page and you can check out the, the music. And at the end of uh, this, um, the collection of these uh, epic gaming themes, there's a piece called Sadness and Sorrow. And it's just a minute or so. And beautiful sounding piece. I haven't uh, heard it before. Uh, I've come to understand that this musical composition is for... Um, an anime gaming project called Naruto and the composer is a Japanese composer uh, named Yasuharu Takanashi I had to google that uh, and Yas Yasuharu Takanashi is credited as the as the composer for the, the piece called Sadness and Sorrow uh, I'm not really into gaming music so I'm kind of ignorant here in, in this department but I did a YouTube search and uh, I think it's a it's a popular uh, composition. Uh, there's a lot of different variations of the of the, the the piece. And yeah, I think it's a popular musical piece in in the gaming world, I I think. I just thought it was it sounded beautiful and it was just perfect for me to to learn Dorico. So I took the sheet music and entered note by note in, in into Dorico, and uh, after I finished, uh, note performer three sounds good in Dorico. It's a good sounding playback engine. It's a good sounding kind of sample sample library. Uh, but in my collection, I have better sounding uh, virtual instruments. Uh, I've spent kind of a uh, yeah a decade or so more than ten years collecting collecting sample libraries and I just wanted to take take this uh, musical piece to to more of a realistic sounding level and the reason I do this uh, when you kind of read the sheet music enter the sheet music into a, a software a sheet music software. And then take the different parts and load it into, for example, Cubis, which I did here. 
and try to make it sound even more uh, realistic, you kind of get super focused on each of the parts and each of the notes. And that will uh, improve all of your abilities within music. Uh, production skills, mixing skills, uh, your ears will expand, your ears will improve. And uh, it's a good tip if you want to kind of uh, improve all areas of uh, of music. You, you improve your your sight reading skills and your your ears, like I said, and your mixing skills. So I exported the audio files from Dorico and the tempo map. I imported that into Cubase. I'm using Cubase 11 here. And I relearned the parts. And I tried to, to find uh, a better sounding virtual instrument that I had in my collection to replace the, the Note Performer 3 parts. I'm not really a good... Uh, I don't really re read sheet music that well. Uh, I can't read sheet music and then play on the fly. I have to input the notes and learn the part by ear. So I took each of the parts, learned it by ear, played it on the keyboard and uh, used the, the, the tech breath controller for each of the parts. It was a little bit of a challenge. I'm not a keyboard player, I am a guitar player. So, but I'm getting there. Uh, that's how you make virtual instruments sound realistic. You perform the parts. And uh, using a breath controller for woodwinds and brass, yeah, that's. I think that's the best way to to make these kinds of virtual instruments sound realistic. And also using a couple of good reverbs and getting the instrument onto the a good placement in the kind of virtual stage onto the virtual stage is uh, also a big factor in making these kinds of instruments sound realistic yeah so um, I'm going through going to go through the the different instruments I used in the the previous video and like I said the Gabriel flute from musical sampling became the the focus point so let's have a listen to the to the Gabriel flute I am using Vienna Ensemble Pro 7 in the background so I load the instruments in Vienna Ensemble Pro uh, outside of Cubase, uh, it just makes uh, things a little bit more stable. Cubase tend to crash sometimes, and using Vienna Ensemble Pro just makes things a little bit more stable. So here's the Gabriel flute uh, from Musical Sampling. Yeah, I just love that with this instrument and similar kind of uh, virtual instruments. You just load the instrument and just perform. And I'm using the, the breath controller and CC2. And it just sounds sounds really natural and realistic. And you, with the, the Gabriel flute, you get a, a few patches here. You get the natural one that works good with uh, with kind of a classical orchestra setting and you also get an, an emotional kind of patch I haven't tried that one yet I just purchased this ins instrument and you also get a kind of a, a fat lead more warm and round uh, patch but also you also you also also uh, have a patch with uh, with short and long breaths that's a kind of a difficult thing for <laughs> that's a difficult thing for me to say uh, short and long breaths that you can program alongside with the instrument track and real human beings when they play for example a, a woodwind kind of instrument or a or a brass kind of instrument a real human being need to breathe so having these short 
uh, sounds that you can program in with the with the music it just makes makes it even more realistic sounding so that's what i did i inputted uh, these kind of uh, short breath sounds alongside with a uh, with a track and it just sounds yeah sounds super uh, realistic it sounds like there's a real human being on the stage playing so we can just have a listen to the to the part here This is where you hear the kind of little airy breath sounds uh, makes a huge difference. Great sounding flute, one of my favorite now in the one of the, my favorite flutes in my collection. I think I have five terabytes of, of uh, virtual instruments stored uh, on different SSDs here. Uh, I really also love the love the, the the flutes from Vienna Symphonic Library, but it's just difficult to 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 perform. You have to kind of uh, make uh, a, a patch that's with legato and and staccato kind of patch uh, and glue them together, and it's just good to have an instrument that you can just perform with a breath controller. Okay. Uh, I have a few instruments from audio modeling. I'm still using version 2 with all of these instruments. Uh, here we have the Swarm Obo 1. So let's have a listen to that. Good sounding oboe uh, from uh, audio modeling. Yeah, uh, I th think the the oboe two from Vienna Symphonic Library sounds better in a kind of a classical setting. Uh, but the thing is, being able to perform the instrument is a big big plus. Okay, so let's have a listen to to the oboe and the flute together. Yeah, that works. Yeah, great. In my ears, I think I'm quite happy with the with the sound. And I also have a swarm bassoon. Great sounding bassoon. Uh, one of those, one of the, the version two instruments from audio mo modeling, that sounds really, really good. And also, I have three clarinets here. Also version two audio modeling, swarm clarinets. Sounds good. Uh, really happy with the uh, with the clarinets. Let's have a listen. Great sounding clarinets. Um, not uh, really a keyboard player. I think I mentioned that. My main instrument is the guitar, uh, but still, being able to to 
play it in, perform the instrument. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, three clarinets from uh, audio molding, version two still. And I also have two bass clarinets. So I'm using uh, a bass clarinet for the alto bass uh, clarinet part. Um, I don't have a bass alto clarinet in my collection. I can't see that the audio molding has a bass alto clarinet in their product uh, range. And I haven't found a, a bass alto clarinet in any kind of any sample library after. So I had to use the bass clarinet for that part. Works well. I just changed the timbre a little bit. Do so you have uh, inside the inside uh, let me just show you this is the swarm clarinet that's the where's the bass clarinet here that's the bass clarinet and you have different timbres you can change the timbre so i just changed the the it's kind of a, a different clarinet. Sounds a little bit uh, like the same clarinet. It's just a little bit of a change in the sound, and I used I did that for the for the alto part. Uh, yep. I'm doing this a little bit on the fly, so I'm sorry if I'm stumbling a little bit. But uh, those are the clarinets from audio modeling. And I'm using saxophones also from audio modeling. So I'm using two alto saxophones here one tenor saxophone and one baritone saxophone and let's have a listen to the to the alto saxophone the alto saxophones sounds good uh, yeah I think the tenor saxophone sounds sounds a lot better so let's have a listen to that and uh, I also have a baritone saxophone from Old Bill Modern audio modeling. Great sounding baritone saxophone. Three trumpets from sample modeling. I absolutely love the the brass from sample modeling. And the trumpets sound, yeah, all of the instruments sound really, really good. And um, let's have a listen to the to the trumpet one here. So, three uh, three th trumpets from from uh, sample modeling, two French horns, two trombones, and two tubas. I'm actually using the same tuba for the euphonium part. Uh, I'm gonna come back to that later. Uh, the samples, uh, the 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 sample library from from sample modeling, the brass sample library, sounds really really good. And let's have a listen to the to the French horns. Great sounding uh, French horn. Uh, one thing with a breath controller, uh, it takes a lot of a lot out of you, uh, you because you have to use your breath. And 
I'm not a brass player. <laughs> so it takes quite a bit uh, of uh, of air and you get kind of uh, lightheaded and uh, a little bit tired, but that's how it is. You have to you have to suffer for for the for the art. <laughs> okay. Uh the tuba. Uh I didn't have a a functioning euphonium kind of tuba in my collection. Uh, I tried the the euphonium from the special edition Vienna Symphonic Library. That didn't work. Um, it's just too um, limited with the patches, uh, so I couldn't make that work. So what I did, I just uh, tuned the tuba from sample modeling uh, one octave up uh, to cover the range for the euphonium. Uh, a, a euphonium is a smaller size tuba. Uh, a higher range, smaller size tuba. So I just tuned it an octave up in contact. Um, let's have a look at that. Let's see if I can find the tuba here. There's the sample modeling the euphonium. Uh, well, it's the tuba. And I just tuned it up one octave to, to cover the range. So that was my solution. I don't have all the instruments in the world and you probably don't have uh, two. Uh, we have to work with what we have. And w whatever kind of instruments you have, you just have to be creative and yeah, work with what you have. Um, so here I just took the, the tuba from sample modeling and tuned it up one octave to cover the euphonium range. Okay. And uh, let's have a listen to the to the brass part uh, because that's the part where um, I'm um, most happy with in this musical piece. And it's all because of the 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 product, the 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 brass from sample modeling. So Let's have a listen to to just the brass part in this uh, in this piece. Yeah, I absolutely love the the brass from sample modeling. It's it's so easy. It's so easy to make it sound good. You just yeah use this breath controller and just perform the part, and it's there. You don't have to go in and tweak every little controller. It's just it's just easy to make it sound good. Uh, yeah, I'm using a solo string bass from Vienna Symphonic Library. Uh, pizzicato patch in the beginning here. Let's have a listen to that. Yeah, so that's the pizzicato patch from the the solo string library from Vienna Symphonic. It's the from the full library. Uh, great sounding uh, string bass. And the pizzicato is just in the beginning here to 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 to, to kind of build up the 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 musical piece before the brass comes in. Okay, and the percussion, I'm using um, a sustained cymbal with mallets from the drums and percussion uh, from Vienna Symphonic Library. And I'm using metal chimes 
for the, the kind of wind chimes uh, part. I'm using a glockenspiel A with wood mallets for uh, the bells part. In the sheet music it's, uh, it reads bells for that part. Uh, I don't know kind of what kind of bells they, they mean. Uh, the glockenspiel works good. And uh, I'm using a marimba and a vibraphone from the special edition uh, Vienna Symphonic Library. The marimba is just a kind of a, um, a, a thrill uh, at the end. It's hidden in the in the music. Uh, it's I had to perform it because I don't have a patch, a kind of a thrill patch. Uh, I don't know if it, if a thrill is the right. Uh, yeah. I hid it in the in the mix. It's it's okay. Uh, I don't have the full version of the marimba, so you have to work with what you have. That's that's how it is. And I'm using also uh, the vibraphone from the special edition uh, library from Vienna Symphonic. So we can have a listen to to that one. Yeah, that works great in this uh, particular piece. And there you have it. That's all the instruments uh, used in this uh, Sadness and Sorrow composition by Yasuharu Takanashi. Uh, with the reverbs, uh, I am using... Just let me see here. I am using this reverb uh, for most of the the dry instruments, uh, it's the Eventide SP twenty sixteen reverb, and I'm using that to create a, a room ambience around the instrument. Uh, it's a great sounding uh, reverb. Uh, it's an algorithmic reverb, so it, it's not taxing on the system. I'm using uh, an, uh, a Mac Mini M one for uh, for uh, yeah everything that I do. With music, uh, I still have to the the, the Mac Mini M1 is good, uh, but I still have to uh, think about these not using the plugins that tax the system uh, a lot because I I want to perform each of the instruments and when you tax the system, it's just uh, you get a lot of pops and clicks and. Uh, it kills the creativity. So, great sounding reverb, algorithmic, not taxing on the system too much. Uh, I'm using that on almost all of the instruments uh, to create uh, a room, an, a room ambience around the instrument. And I'm using the position uh, setting. I'm, uh, with this reverb, you can just kind of push the instrument further onto the stage, uh, further back onto the stage. Uh, so I'm using that uh, with the percussion, pushing the the instruments in in the back. Uh, also with the with the the horns and the, the trombones. Fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, plugin. Uh, and I'm using uh, the Altiverb Seven as the main reverb. So let's have a look at that. So I'm using the, the MC01 Orchestral Broadcast Studio Patch, uh, L or IR is probably the more correct uh, to say. Great sounding reverb, uh, I'm using it uh, as an effect send, so I'm sending each of the tracks to that reverb. And for, for the most part I have minus 4 dB as the send. So you get a kind of a little bit of the direct uh, sound. Uh, yeah. That's uh, that's how I did uh, this, uh, this piece. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. I'm sorry if I'm stumbling a little bit. I'm doing this on the fly. So uh, I hope you got uh, a few tips here. 
being able or performing each of the parts will make it more realistic sounding and putting each of the instruments onto a virtual stage and kind of when you listen to the when you solo each of the instruments you kind of have to um, be able to close your eyes and kind of pinpoint where the the player is uh, having that in mind that there's actual human beings on to the uh, on the virtual stage playing each of the instruments um, it's a good tip if you want to make it sound realistic but the number one thing is to is the performance not quantizing too much of the midi notes i haven't quantized any of the notes here i but i had to struggle a little bit to to learn the parts by ear and perform it and using the breath controller and learning how to breathe so i uh, because i i run out of breath quite fast uh yeah, hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.